What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. It's where we go back a week and give you the past seven days of tech news videos in one single video, guys. We had so much in information about the Google Pixel Fold. It was absolutely wild. But we talk about a ton of other devices as well from Samsung and everything else in between. So check out a great week of tech news. We'll see you in the next one. It has to do with a phone that I am looking forward to because I really, really enjoyed this phone. It has to do with the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro. What can we can expect from the screen sizes, who's making the displays, and all of that. So here we go, guys. This information comes from Ross Young. Ross Young saying that per DSCC, that's the company he, I guess, works for, owns, new monthly OLED smartphone service, the Google Pixel 8 will have a 6.16 inch display, which is down from the 6.32 inch display of the Pixel 7. And the Pixel 8 Pro will have a 6.7 inch display, which is the same as the Pixel 7 Pro. Both start panel production in May. And he goes on to say in a, another question out there, who would make in the panel? He says Samsung. So they're gonna use Samsung displays again on there. A couple of things I'm curious about is they're making, they're doing panel production in May. This phone usually comes out in October. Are they gonna push this phone out earlier or not? It remains to be seen. I'd be kind of surprised if they push it out earlier. Um, but it's interesting also that they're making the smaller Pixel 8 small, even smaller now. So it's gonna even smaller in your hand, which I think will make some people happy and give them that kind of premium feel on there. So some interesting things coming over from the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro. I do hope they, when they use the display, I hope it's a higher display quality and brightness than the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. Um, this felt like a, just a step down in terms of pixel uh, quality and display quality versus like a traditional Samsung Galaxy S type device. Next up, as you can see from the headline, Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 5 and Flip 5 batteries are now gonna be easier to replace and with that first sentence, it kind of tells you that Samsung has followed the same path as the S23. The batteries have a pull strip to make them easier to replace. Now, when they say that, it's not gonna be like, oh, grab my, my, my flip or my fold and I'm gonna peel something off and put the battery in. It's not gonna be that easy for you. It just means like once you pop open the, the phone, which is a task, I guess, a little bit in itself, that at that point, it's gonna be easier to replace the battery. So um, if if it took, you know, maybe a couple hours to replace a battery and, and something broken on a, a Z Flip or Z Fold, it might take even less time to do it now. And our last story is super interesting. Why? Because it goes through some devices that we have been scratching for, itching for, waiting for, but getting super stoked for, because it has to do with ultra versions of the Fold line and much, much more other folding devices as well. So here's the information. There's a tweet put out by RG Cloud who's saying that, that what he knows so far, new high ends will be the Z Flex, Z Fold Ultra, Z Flip Ultra, and the Z Tab, which are devices we've heard about, but we haven't really heard that much information in terms of like, is it actually going to happen or not? Also, Future Fold Z Ultra will have 4K display from Samsung. The regular Z will be a QHD BOE display. That's very interesting. So 4K display on that new Z Ultra uh, fold. The flip will have a 2K display with Samsung and then the regular version will have the FHD 1080p BOE display. Z Flex will be the tri-fold displayed phone tablet. The Z Tab, which is going to be the foldable tablet, will have a will just be a foldable tablet. They'll also have a new mid-end Galaxy K series. It's, he's saying that it might remove the S Plus series, but I've heard they're not for 2024. And they're gonna have a new premium S, I guess better than the Ultra as well. And then in a, an, a separate tweet, he also goes on to say that all fancy things around uh, foldable world are coming in late 2024, not this year. We just have too much sources going on and not so-called insiders that confused everything. Maybe it's intended. So. A lot of these, if you've been wanting a ultra version of the fold and the flip, it looks like they're coming in the end of 2024, as, at the earliest, maybe 2025. But I am very, very excited about that. That means uh, you saw a 4K display in a fold 
fold phone it's gonna be so awesome i can't wait to see what they do with uh maybe they'll finally give us the premium cameras we've been waiting for and the premium display and the premium everything in this phone i'm very very looking forward to this let me know the story of the day has to do with the iphone where is my iphone where is my freaking iphone here's my iphone right below me they are getting a feature built into the phone software wise that Android has had basically, I think forever. And I never thought it would come to the iPhone and it looks like it is. Here it is. This is the information that's coming out. It is Apple will finally allow for side loading apps in iOS 17 to comply with EU regulations. EU is the European Union. This will allow users to download apps outside of the App Store and allow developers to avoid the 15 to 30% fees. This is humongous. This is huge. This means that if there's a certain app you want to download that's not in the App Store, you'll now be able to sideload it once iOS 17 launches. And this is good in a lot of reasons. You think about, for instance, just think about the Fortnite game. Fortnite got kicked, basically kicked out of the App Store because they were going around to Apple's backs and trying to not have to pay the fee that when people buy V-Bucks, that Apple would get a piece of that when they buy it through the App Store. And then you think about, you know, any kind of app, have it be a messaging app or a app that maybe customizes something on your phone, you'll now be able to download and sideload those apps. This is awesome news. Very excited about this. Um, you can also look at it on the other side, saying that people that don't know what they're doing could potentially get viruses or malware or things like that. Completely true. But at the same time, it's probably gonna be turned off by default and you're gonna have to really know what you're doing in order to turn it on and get and where to find those apps as well. So it's not gonna be as easy as just being like, oh, I just randomly installed some app. There's gonna be a, a security feature blocking you from just doing it accidentally. So I'm all for it. What do you guys think? Next up, as you can see from this headline, Pixel will have eight gigabytes of RAM, four colors, and this included dock. That's right, the Pixel tablet, which should be out in June. We don't know a price just yet, but it's gonna come in four colors, and those colors will be green, black, beige, and black uh, eight gigs of ram like i mentioned it should come with 128 to 256 gigs of storage the dock will be included with it and that dock will allow for better sound it will allow for you to charge the tablet that way it will allow for it to stand up uh, it's kind of an interesting take on a tablet because it's more or less a it's competing against their Google Hub Max in a way. Probably it'll be, I guess it'll, well, it might not be more expensive, but it'll be either equal in price or maybe a little bit more expensive than their Hub Max. And then also you can pull it off that and just use it as a plain old regular tablet. So kind of interesting stuff. It will not come with a USB-C charger at all. You'll have to use one that you already have if you need one. Next up, we kind of talked about this. Yes, 24, 24 Plus, and 24 Ultra getting RAM upgrades, and it looks like that rumor of it happening is actually getting stronger and stronger and stronger and will happen. Here's the information from Ravenga saying that the 24 and 24 Plus will come with 12 gigabytes of RAM by default, and the 24 Ultra will come with 16 gigs of RAM by default. So if you want the you know, if, if you're looking for that upgrade in terms of performance and being able to run more apps more smoothly and have better performance on the phone, looks like the 24 series across the board will be giving you one and only story today, but it's, you know, there's some chunks of meat in here to chew on. As again, it's about the Google Pixel Fold and it's about an article that came out on uh, the CNBC website and they go into detail on some things we didn't know about necessarily and they bite down in some other bits of information to add more confirmation to it. So we're gonna actually look at some tweets here because it's a little bit easier to and put together. So we're gonna use these tweets, but I did see the article and I can confirm that this matches the article. So according to CNBC, the Pixel Fold, known by Google's internal development codename Felix, is expected to be priced at $1,700. So we've been hearing $1,799, but $1,700 would actually be cheaper by $100 almost versus the Z Fold 4, so that would be a nice little drop. Expected to have a 5.8 inch outer screen, which is what we heard, which again is going to be shorter but wider versus the Z Fold 4, and a 7.6 inch inner screen 
and weigh 283 grams. Now, just for comparison sakes, the Pixel Fold will be 20 grams heavier than the Z Fold 4. If you're uh, American like myself, we do ounces more so here. So Fold uh, Pixel Fold will weigh 10 ounces and the Fold 4 will weigh 9.2 ounces, so 0.8 ounce difference on there, but we're not done. It's more information saying Google's internal documentation says the Pixel Fold will last up to 72 hours in low power mode, CNBC reported, which I also saw that it's gonna have 24 hours of battery life, which is the same as the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, which let's be honest, it doesn't really have 24 hours of battery life unless you basically don't do anything on it. Pixel Fold buyers will get a Google smartwatch, the Pixel Watch, for free as well. And then there's another bit of information that the Pixel uh, Fold will be water resistant. We don't know how much water resistant or dust resistant, but at least water resistant on there. So some chunks of information, it is going to be heavier, but it's also gonna have a bigger battery life than the, or at least bigger battery than the Z Fold 4. That could be potentially why. Also, it's shorter and fatter. That could be another potential reason why. Um, you also get to add in, which at the end of the day, it's heavier, but I'll be really curious to see if it's like so heavy that it gives me you know, fatigue in my arm when I'm holding it. This phone doesn't right now, but I can see someone grabbing this and be like, dang, that the heavy damn phone uh, versus what I'm used to, you know, when they have these traditional candy bar phones. The other part is the pre-order. If you pre-order the uh, Pixel Fold, you most likely, it's sounding like, will get the Pixel Watch for free. I love the Pixel Watch. I haven't been wearing a watch at all, but when I do wear a watch, I do prefer that over the Samsung one. The simplicity, the lightweight of, of it, um, and it's pretty easy to use. I, it, nothing against the Galaxy Watch 5, but I don't know, for me, it's it's just, I like it better for some reason. And then the other part of it is that uh, the water resistance, like we said, something you definitely want in a foldable phone, Pixel Fold will be getting that. And uh, $1,700 price point, potentially $99 cheaper versus the Z Fold 4. So some things to chew on right there that are quite interesting overall with the release of the phone. If you wanna read the whole article, like I do all the time, I always put my sources in the description down below where you'll see like a little thing that says links. So you can read the article in there from CNBC. Thanks for watching. Your question of the day is, what do you think about the Pixel Fold so far? Is it enticing? Is it less enticing after this information? What intrigues you about it? Let us know in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's jump in our Q&A. Sean is saying, do you think next model of their flagship phones and tab series will ditch the eight gigabytes of RAM and become exclusive to the FE line? And do you think that the tab 9 Ultra will get one terabyte storage considering their smartphone has gone, had it for a long time. I don't believe it's getting the one terabyte. From what I've heard, I think it's only gonna go up to 512 gigabytes. So I'd say no to the S9 Ultra getting one terabyte. And then will the Tab Series ditch eight gigabytes and become exclusive to the FE line? I would say it's probably gonna be another year or two before that happens because I know you know, Apple and Android are, are different, but Apple's right now is eight gigs of RAM on their pro model. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't necessarily need it. It still runs really, really well. I'd like to see them put that bump, but I think I still think it's a year away before we see that um, happen. Thanks for wa uh, watching, guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. Hashtag question, and we'll see you down the road. Peace. What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. Make sure you subscribe so you know what's going on in the world of tech. How is everyone doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day. We've got two news stories for you and two questions. Let's go. Our first story is about the Google Pixel tablet. Now this tablet should be out in June. And remember, it's that tablet thing that looks like a tablet with a dock and it has a speaker and all that stuff. It's like an all-in-one device. What is the price going to be? Well, it looks like some pricing is potentially leaking out. And that is coming from Roland Quan who's saying that the Google Pixel tablet 128 and 256 porcelain and haze pricing looks like 600 to 650 euros so what does that equate out to so usually when they give like the euro price it's usually equivalent into dollars meaning like if it's 600 euros there it's 600 dollars i don't mean like the conversion rate so 
600, it, my guess is the 128 would be 599 and the 256 would probably be like 649 is my guess on there for that. So expect to pay a little bit of a premium. And then at that point, it's like, okay, this tablet is potentially, I, I guess it's very similar in price to what you get with like a Samsung tablet, but the specs and, and performance are obviously gonna be really good, but maybe not as good as like a regular Samsung tablet. Uh, the, the 8 Gen 1 ones, the, the Tab S8, S8 Plus, and S8 Ultra, and then when the S9s come out, those will be even more powerful. But you gotta factor in that the Google Pixel tablet will have the dock, the speaker, and all that stuff within there as well as an extra added value. Usually the Galaxy Z Fold line comes out in August. It's been out in August, I think, for almost ever. Maybe not the very first time it came out. Maybe that one came out just randomly on April or something, but August is the release date usually of the Galaxy Z Fold line. What about the Galaxy Z Fold 5? It's looking like it actually might come out earlier. Now, this is the information that's popping out from Ravengus, who's saying that Samsung Electronics usually starts mass production of foldable phones at the end of June, but this year they will start mass production at the beginning of June. It's also possible that the Galaxy Foldable will be released in July of this year. Now that's a little bit of rumor, a little bit of hypothesizing. I guess when you, when you break it down, it wouldn't surprise me all that much if they do push it a little bit forward due to the fact that the Pixel Fold is due to come out in June. And then if you know that the, the Galaxy Z Fold is gonna come out a little bit earlier, maybe you'll wait for that one. Um, but it's, I can't imagine another reason why they'd wanna release it earlier than what they do now. It, I guess it would have to be competition. They, they see some competition on the rise and they wanna get theirs out there before other people's do and other companies, especially this year where we hear like OnePlus is putting out a fold, Google is, and so on and so forth. Your Our only story of the day is about the Google Pixel Fold. Some information was leaked out and released by John Prosser, Prosser, and I wanna go through everything that's been talked about. There's information we didn't know about this phone that has been leaked out, so let's jump right in to it. If you wanna read the article and video, I'll link both down below outside of this. So, um, price, let's jump into that first. Um, for the 256, it's gonna be $1,799, and that will come in white or black. If you want the 512 gigabyte, it's gonna come uh, in only black, and it'll be 1919. Kind of a weird price. 1919. I don't know why they're not making 1899, or I don't know why it's $120 more, but it is. So it, almost $2,000 for that 512. So this is actually is this more expensive than the? No, I guess it's about the same. Yeah, I think it is a little bit more expensive than the Galaxy Z Fold 4, even at 512. So kind of crazy right there. So keep that in mind. Very, very expensive. We talked about this earlier, but if you do pre order the Galaxy, uh, the, the Pixel Fold phone, you will get a free uh, Pixel Watch, which I love that watch. It's a great watch. Um, you get that for free if you pre-order. The pre-order dates will be May 10th. If you order it through Google directly, it will be uh, available on May 30th from Carriers and Best Buy if you wanna pre-order that one. And then the actual release date is June 27th. Again, these are kind of dates we've heard about, but I just wanna run through some of the stuff that's in here as well. As for those 256 and 512 gigabytes of storage, the speeds on that are UFS 3.1. So UFS 4.0, not on there, but UFS 3.1, still very fast, but it's not the ultimate fastest. I don't even know if 4.0 is actually out just yet for phones, maybe it is. Uh, both models will come with 12 gigs of, of RAM. You know, there's no 16 gig RAM model, only 12 gig of RAM, and it'll come with LPDDR5 RAM. It'll have the Tensor G2 chip and Titan M2 security chip. So the same stuff that's in the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro will be in the Pixel Fold. The dimensions and weight, it's gonna be 10 ounces or 283 grams, depending upon how you like to measure your things in terms of weight. Height will be 5.5 inches by 3.1 inches and with a 0.5 inch depth. 
We don't have the dimensions yet of it unfolded. So if you wanted the unfolded dimensions, those aren't out quite yet. The outer display is expected to be a 17 by four by nine aspect ratio and be in there at 5.8 inches. That outside display is 120 Hertz. That's, you know, the smaller one and it's full HD plus OLED display with a resolution of 2092 by 1080 with a 408 PPI. The inner display is 7.66 inches. It's really like 7.56 inches, but we'll just round it up a little bit. Six by five aspect, aspect ratio, 2208 by 1840 resolution, OLED, 380 PPI. The inner display does, does have ultra thin glass protected by plastic. Both displays are 120 Hertz. Inside and outside, both are 120 Hertz. Uh, the Pixel Fold will come with Google One VPN, so if you buy this, you'll get Google VPN for free on there. So if you you know want to hide your data, uh, when your internet activity when you're home or away, you can do that now, which is cool, and it'll come for free with the Pixel Fold. Camera sensors are actually different. I don't think these cameras are on any other Pixel Fold, and they seem like, I could be wrong, they seem like a little bit of a downgrade versus the Pixel 7 Pro. 48, so it's gonna have a 48 megapixel main sensor. The telephoto is 10.8 megapixels. The telephoto has a five times optical zoom and up to 20X digital. So Pixel 7 Pro has a 30X digital zoom. Ultra wide is 10.8 megapixel sensor. The front outer selfie camera is a 9.5 megapixel sensor the, and fixed focus. The inner selfie camera is a eight megapixel sensor and also has fixed focus. And like I said, different cameras than the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, which is interesting, but you know, something to know. And they're getting, they'll, they'll announce it at Google I.O., which is just a couple weeks away from now. But that's what we know about the Pixel Fold so far. Um, Again, I'm not terribly disappointed in the camera, but I would have liked to see basically the same cameras that the Pixel 7 Pro has, especially with a slightly extra zoom if I wanted it. 20X isn't bad, but I'd like to see it at 30X. The price is really, really expensive. Like, that's really expensive. Now, you can also, you know, you can, you can finance it and not pay all that money up front. You can go into trading in devices, which we don't know trade in prices just yet and how good or bad they'll be. But our first and only story of the day before we get into the questions is all about the Google Pixel Fold. An official live video came out hands-on showing the phone in action. And I'm not gonna show you the video, I will link it down below, but I will show you a little diagram of what the big complaint about the phone is. And the reason I'm not showing is I'm feeling Samsung, uh, Google is gonna start copy striking channels potentially, and I don't wanna be one of those channels. So let's get into it. So basically, if you've seen the inside of the display of the Samsung phone, there's really not a lot of bezel. It's, it's basically almost all screen all the way around. So you don't really have to worry about anything being in the way like you just see the screen you see a beautiful screen at that i mean let me just play a real quick video actually i'm watching the video let's see so we get the video you can see takes up basically the whole screen it looks great well the google pixel fold has bezels all around the phone now they are bigger on the top and on the bottom uh, but on the sides, they're a little bit thin. They're thinner than, they're, they're thicker than the Samsung ones are, but they're a little bit thicker. So I, I won't be able to make, so I, I made a die. I made a little, a bad, bad looking picture. So here's my photo that I took. The blue designates the bezel. The bezels are black on the Pixel phone, but I just wanted this to stand out a little bit more. So you can see on the top and the bottom, it is much thicker. It might not be this thick, but just for contrasting sake. And then on the sides, it's thinner. But the bezel will be like that. It'll be thicker on the top and the bottom, and then on the sides, it's thinner. Now, you have to remember that the camera for the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is underneath the display. You can't see it, so that's one reason why it really doesn't have any bezel. It doesn't really need it. Pixel has bezel because the camera is in that top part of the bezel on the phone, which is better because the camera sucks on the Galaxy Z Fold 4, it's terrible. 
It's terrible. It's really bad. The one that's underneath this, this display is awful. It's okay for like video chats, but you don't want to be taking selfies and stuff. I mean, you can, but you don't want to be using them as like a, a cool photo forever for keepsake. So the pixels sits on the top, meaning it's going to get much better selfie photos. Now they could have put it on top of the screen, but they chose a different de design language on there. And let's be honest, not every phone is perfect. This phone has flaws in terms of the camera being underneath the display. It's, that's garbage. And um, the, the cameras in general aren't they're great. You can see the uh, crease more so. And then you think about the Pixel Fold. Okay, so it has bezel. That's one of the flaws, I guess you could say, about the phone. But the cameras are going to be better because it's on top of that 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 bezel. You know, we're going to have great cameras. I'm not going to worry about that at all. So for me, that's the biggest takeaway from it is that the cameras will be better. And then I think you'll just get used to it. Just like the crease when you use the phone, you get used to it. It doesn't bug you anymore. I, I'm so used to it. I don't even think about it. For someone that's seeing new, they might it might be a sore thumb. I think the bezels would be a sore thumb for someone, but once you start to use it, it won't even be an issue anymore. That's my take on it. Not that concerned with it. Um, does it look super sexy on the inside? No, it doesn't. On the outside, it looks very similar, but thicker and shorter than the Samsung version. You can see the camera at the top with the Galaxy phone and the Pixel phone, the Pixel Fold phone. So. It, that doesn't bug me. It looks very normal. Again, it looks very similar to this, just shorter and wider, which is a good thing. Our first story of the day has to do with the performance of the Exynos 2400 versus the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, the Exynos 2400, the rumors so far are it's going to be coming back to the Galaxy S24 line of phones for some folks throughout the world. So, like, if you used to get the Exynos version, and now you get the Snapdragon, you're gonna go back to most likely getting the Exynos version. If you're in America, you've been getting the Snapdragon for basically ever, that's going to continue, so you will get the 8 Gen 3. But how do these two processors compare in a Geekbench test against each other? Well, the preliminary numbers that are coming out thus far are the following. So with an 8 Gen 2, just to show you some differences, 8 Gen 2, which is the current processor that we have, you'd get averages of 1485 to 1495 on a single core and then on a multi-score you get anywhere from about 5050 all the way up to 5200. But now the Exynos, the highest score they got on that was 1711 on the single core and then on the multi-core it was 6967 crazies. Now, and again, that was the Exynos 2400. The average though for the 2400 was single core 1530 and a multi-score of 6210, which both of those numbers are better than what you would get with the, you know, just general score of, you know, one of the other, uh, the last generation. And then the 8 Gen 3, preliminary numbers expected are 1750 to 1800, single core and 6450 to 6500 on multi-core. So definitely a better performer than the Exynos. Not a huge, huge change, but there's definitely a difference in there. Uh, maybe big enough to see different things on there. I mean, I, it's not a whole loss on there, so I don't think that just because you're getting the Exynos, it's gonna be a completely complete dud. It's not. That's still really, really good scores especially versus last year's processors. Those are pretty big jumps in general. So I don't think you should be too tore up about it, but versus the HN3, it looks like the HN3 will still be the king and the Exynos is just gonna kind of be a little bit behind that. Next up, as you can see from the headline, one of the early rumors about the S24 series is that it's gonna have advanced materials to reduce weight slightly. And it seems like that's some of the you know, the arenas that Samsung is pushing to is lighter phones and better battery life. And I have to admit, I don't find any hate on that at all. And, you know, they might not be pushing this or that, but you have to credit them because we're getting to a point where the, the, the performance is amazing on devices. And how much further do we need to go with mobile apps so that they run a little bit better and they maybe open up a millisecond of a bit faster? doesn't really matter they're all everything's really fast and fluid usually on these systems so you know getting software to be better 
with uh, just running faster in itself because you know again the processing speed's already there and then battery life that's a huge thing we want to get to battery life where we get all day and then maybe we get multi-day and a week worth of battery life we'll, we'll eventually get to those points and hopefully samsung's pushing it in that direction it seems like they are and people want lighter devices at the same time without having to give up battery life and again it looks like samsung's doing that with both and it looks like they're going to continue that with the s24 series and our last story has to do with the always on display Displays on the Galaxy Z Flip 5. It looks like they're taking a page from the iPhone. The latest rumor coming out is that they will have a always on display like the iPhone 14 Pro phones where you get this. I, I actually really like their always on displays. I actually kind of like it better than Android's and it would be nice to see that on the Flip 5, which I assume they're going to use it on that smaller outside display, obviously, on there to make it a little bit more playful and fun. And I think Looks like that what they're gonna do, at least from early rumors. Thanks for watching, guys. My question out to you guys of the day is, what would you like to see come from the iPhone over to Android? I don't mean like iMessage or FaceTime. I mean like a feature that is easily brought over. Uh, brought over. Let me know in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's jump on our Q&A. First question from Timothy saying, if I'm going to have a phone for a few years, if I get the Fold 5 or Flip 5, my mom and brother are going to surprise me with a birthday gift where they surprise me, but if I get the Fold 5 and have it for a few years, which storage option would you recommend for someone keeping their phone for a few years? Also, I was going to get a watch. Should I get the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro? Wait for the Galaxy Watch 6 Pro. I have a certain, uh, have an excellent rest of your weekend, sir. So yeah, sir, so if you're gonna get the Fold 5, I would say, if you're gonna keep it for years and years, I think just to keep the monkey off your back, get a 5, 12 gigabyte, I think that's plenty, plenty, plenty on there and then for the watch mm, watch 5 pro is still really good you're gonna get a lot of you know updates for years to come good battery life but I, th I, th I think if they both come out at the same time i'd say why don't you grab the watch 6 pro especially if you can get a good deal on it next question from tater saying they have a desk job and have only ever had uh, one phone at a time i'm wanting to try the pixel fold i've had all the recent pixel phones and all of them and love all of them due to their cameras. Would you recommend a folding phone? If you could, I have only one phone. Another question, I've never owned a tablet. Is having a folding phone equal to having a phone and a tablet? Can you have phone apps and tablet apps on the same device? I've seen some articles where people complain about only being able to get the tablet version of an app and lose some of the functionality. Is this a common thing? So. In terms of your first question, if I could only have one phone, I would probably almost definitely make it a folding phone. One device really even, yeah, if I couldn't have a tablet, if I had to choose between a tablet and a phone, I would choose the, the, the folding phones. Because yeah, you're right. They are kind of a good mix between the two. Don't get me wrong, there's, it's still really hard to compete with a huge tablet versus a folding phone because it's still a lot smaller. This phone, even though it's bigger than a regular phone, it's still a lot smaller than a tablet. But yeah, I think if you're only gonna have one device, the folding phones are really good to have as a one device, eliminating the need for a tablet and a phone. In terms of tablet apps, no, I don't really notice it too much. Maybe Viber, but I don't lose any functionality over it. Um, but no, I haven't run into that issue where I'm like, oh, this is a tablet app, but it's on my phone and it's not working right. I don't notice any of that stuff in terms of, uh, again, a phone app versus a tablet app and having an issue with it on this like that. And our last question from Goon Squad, are you planning on getting the, the, the Pixel Fold? Which color and storage are you getting? And do you think that the Pixel Fold will make you take your SIM out of your Fold 4 and not use it anymore? So I'm hoping that Google will just send it to me so I won't have to choose a storage. But if I had to, I would most likely choose the 256. Um, my wife will definitely be getting it. So I'm not gonna get two for free. I, the most I'll get is one for free from Google. But um, I would definitely get my wife probably the 256 for her, unless it's free to get 512. But otherwise I'll get her the 256. I think that's definitely the sweet spot, especially if you use cloud storage for most people. Oh, so color uh, black if it's the, obviously the 512 or uh, white if it's the 256. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. Hashtag question. We'll see you down the road. Peace.